Well, welcome back, everyone, to the City Conservation Center. Hope you guys are all having wonderful days so far. My name is Salif, and it's so great to have you guys back here for another episode back in our little conservation project. Yeah, so if you guys couldn't tell from the last few videos, I really haven't been feeling this project all that much. Again, I'm going to have, like, a video on this relatively soon about, like, how I feel about, like, you know, the scenery packs versus the animal packs. Now it's, it's kind of reared its ugly head recently uh but still i'm having a lot of fun with this project in particular because i get to build for a lot of animals i don't usually build for and the ones that we're actually building for today are the indian rhinos yeah so i was super excited about this so in case if you guys aren't aware of the whole premise of city conservation center the whole idea behind it is all endangered animals for the most part uh i really wanted to have this be really a good story on you know, animal conservation in the wild, animal conservation within zoos and stuff like that. I'm going to have some animals that are least concerned, but still have, like, conservation stories behind them, if that makes sense. So, like, the American bison's going to be one of those. So, we're kind of making our way throughout here, and what I'm starting off with is just the perimeter of the habitat. In case if you guys do want to learn how to build, this is the perfect way to kind of like, you know, have a nice big build for us to kind of talk about my process, and maybe inspire you guys to try out something of the same. So, what I really wanted to focus on was the perimeter of the habitat, and I knew right off the bat I wanted to have this little bump up out here. So, I wanted to frame it with a tree, so I used the new Mpingo trees, those are a new type of African tree. That that look absolutely gorgeous by the way i know how i feel about like most of the new trees that they give us in these packs but the umpingo tree is actually one of the better ones uh, so i'm also utilizing these mud walls i believe these are by zoo but i could be mistaken i think they might be by planet zoo blogger either way really awesome pieces to use definitely look up mud pillar or mud wall on the uh workshop and you should be able to find these they're relatively popular so i'm starting to use those all throughout here to really Really make my organic shape of the habitat. Uh, I've been using a lot of fences for the other parts of the preservation planes, but this time around I wanted to have this be a little bit more themed and a little bit more tropical, so I really wanted to give these rhinos the best, best damn habitat I could possibly give them. But we also do use these fences up here. They don't really serve any protective like function other than to keep the guests away from those areas back there. And what I also do back here is double wall this, so you guys can already tell. I do have that elephant fencing, which, you know, it's not really elephant fencing, it's more like rhino fencing, but I'm still using that over there. And there's Yoda going, because apparently I can't have a video where I act completely mature. <laughs> but no, uh, getting through here and completely ignoring whatever that was, uh, I kind of make our way throughout here and add the fences. So I'm still using the same fences from the rest of Preservation Plains. And this is something I really do suggest you guys try out in your own builds. It's keeping a consistent style with your themed areas. It's something that's extremely important to kind of carry on throughout your builds and forgive me I gotta grab my charger but that's always something that I really do need to illustrate to you guys is that when you do build these larger areas you do need to keep a certain style in mind because if you have every single build look different from the other you're not going to have a consistent style with your sections you can have different styles in the zoo of course but you really need to nail down a consistent theme for your smaller areas i also wanted this little bump out area to have some lookouts into the habitat that really aren't obstructed by those elephant fences so i took advantage of like the natural landscape around Around us and I took advantage of the little bump up that we have over there and we kind of make a nice little wall that guests can't really climb out of but we still are able to play with a little bit more what I also do over here is make a little bit of a poaching camp because obviously we always need to include as much education in our builds as possible as you guys can probably guess Rhinos are poached. Uh, it's not too good, guys. It's not looking good. Uh, it's one of like the main reasons why the Sumatran rhino is almost extinct, and the same with the Javan rhino. But there's a ton of awesome conservation efforts all around the world to help preserve all the rhinos, believe it or not. Uh, we're not too sure about the northern white rhinos. We're really holding on to hope for those guys, but still. Uh, but making our way throughout here, I really want to have that little section over there. I didn't go too crazy with it. It's very much inspired off of Bronx Zoo's Tiger Mountain uh, 
section and uh, I'll actually put up a little picture of that right there for you guys so it's essentially a little tiger mountain uh, it's essentially a little poaching camp that is set up in the Bronx Zoo obviously not a real poaching camp uh, but it's still a really awesome thing to have uh, just to give guests a little bit more of a visual on how these things are set up how like you know they're they're like poached in the wild essentially and it's just really freaking awesome uh, and I don't know I just always love that kind of like extra theming in there sorry forgive me if I'm kind of like rambling on I'm trying to find the little uh, uh, poaching camp so we essentially make our way throughout here and we start to you know wait hold on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we start to work on the rock work over here, and this is something that I really do suggest you guys do first. When I do build, I do kind of paint my builds, and I know that sounds kind of weird at first, but once I kind of start to explain it, you guys will start to get it. So I, At least I hope you guys do. But we essentially make our way throughout here, and we do a little bit of work on rocks. So essentially what I do in terms of terrain is I start with the basic kind of like terrain movements. So I have my like hills, I have my valleys and stuff like that. Then I move on to the rocks. Now the rocks are a little bit more jagged than the actual terrain in game. And it really does help to set the scene for where an animal can go and where it can't go. You can see I'm working next to the elephant fencing over there to double check to make sure that the rhinos will not be able to escape through there. As you guys know, rhinos are very strong animals, so we don't want them kind of making their way out into like, you know, the city and stuff like that. That'd be kind of bad to have. So we essentially work on that over there, and I wanted to try something out over here as well. You guys may be very familiar with Leader. He's a wonderful little Planet Zoo creator, and he is insanely awesome like extremely underrated and he came up with this little technique when the decals came out and it essentially gives you a good way to get like these nice sandy bottoms with a little bit of water poking out obviously i don't do it nearly as good as him but i still want to try and recreate that on my own terms uh so that's what i kind of do over there took all the inspiration from leader go give him some love please he's an incredible creator uh but making our way throughout here and we start to work on the actual terrain colors a little bit more and you can see i start to sink those little mud baths in and i put those down primarily just as a way to orient myself as to where i want the enrichment pieces to be that's another part of exhibit planning that i think is extremely important it's kind of setting up your focal areas so you need to determine those areas first and foremost before you get too deep in uh you can see later down the line we add a few other enrichment items like the tire toys and maybe some like you know barrel feeders those really aren't as important as the ones that kind of stay nailed down in position like those mud wallows like the scratching posts and stuff like that so that's stuff that i always put down or at least try to put down first as a way to help orient myself around the habitat and it really does help to you know create these nice vista points where you could actually see your animals interacting with the environment a lot more and that's why i love about like you know building habitats like that and you can see i'm going through with one piece of grass i'm going through with my periwinkle grass and then i go through with the yorkshire fog grass both extremely awesome pieces and here's why i'm doing them all in one fell swoop for each piece i take all those pieces okay i take them all put them all in one group then sink them slightly into the ground that gives them a really awesome texture and allows them to kind of me mend i guess mend yeah kind of blend in with the terrain to help it feel a little bit more solidified and help it feel a lot more organic that's extremely important when it comes to you know making all of your habitats and stuff really shine it's making sure that it blends organically with the environment around it so i take all these in one single group and then i just sink it in a little bit down uh, and I also make sure to place grass only in areas where it makes sense. Obviously, rhinos are extremely heavy animals. I bet you guys can't even try and lift one. And if you can, I have a gold medal for you. Okay? Uh, but still, moving on from there, I want to make sure that we don't place grass in any areas where the rhinos would frequently trample. Uh, this is very much often seen in zoos. And, of course, we wouldn't really have a zoo with this much foliage in the habitat if you have rhinos. But I kind of do 
make it make sense a little bit more with the amount of like trees and kind of hard foliage that we throw in a little bit later. I also go back to using the drain grass. I've not used the drain grass in so long, but I'm so happy that I'm finally going back to using it because it's like, it's such a wonderful piece. I just wish the shadows weren't as intense on my computer as they are. Uh, but unfortunately, when you do run on like the highest graphic settings, it shows up like, you know, the darkest shadow possible and I don't know why. Again, another thing I do throughout here is work with a little bit more of terrain paint and that's something that I really do try and emphasize when you are building for larger hoof stock like this. It's always taking into account that they're going to trample, they're going to kill the grass, and they're going to make areas nice and dirty. So, <coughs> wow, so we try and do our best around there. And again, here's where I kind of fumbled the bag over here. I felt like I needed one of those scratching posts, so I throw one right over there. And I also throw the feeders, one in the back and one up front. I'm not sure if those would be actual rhino feeders, but that's something I still include nonetheless because I felt like it'd be good to have. So we make our way throughout here and start to make this area feel a little bit more planted down. I'm extremely inspired from my recent trip to Bronx. It really wasn't recent, but it was actually like a month ago or so. I am going again relatively soon for my birthday, so that's going to be wicked fun. Uh, but still making our way throughout here and just making sure that we are able to force this area up a little bit more. And again, this is where I was extremely inspired by Bronx. As you guys can probably guess, we do have a monorail running through here. I really wanted to emulate Bronx Zoo's Wild Asia monorail, but have it be more so for our preservation planes and maybe for a river walk. I'm not entirely sure, but I thought that'd be a really fun thing to have going on throughout this entire excursion. But we kind of make do with all that stuff and we add a whole bunch of bamboo because as you guys can probably guess, this is kind of like my little, you know, song and dance. Bamboo makes for extremely cheap and easy theming, especially for zoos. So if you guys do go to a zoo, Keep an eye out for some bamboo. You will definitely see a lot of it, and you'll see a lot of it in large amounts because it really does help an area feel a lot more tropical than it is, even if it is an intemperate environment. Look at me. I, lo I live up in silly old New England where it gets like freezing cold in the winter, but we still have bamboo that survives. It's so insane to see, but it still makes it feel a little bit more tropical. So that's why I always love using that. And I also use the marula trees. That's a little trick that my buddy Forge taught me, uh, just using the top of the marula trees as a way to create these nice and beautiful bushes. And also, if it's not broke, don't fix it. This is one of my favorite sayings when it comes to using blueprints again and again throughout a zoo, especially if you're trying to retain the same theme. So we kind of do conserve uh, the preservation planes theming throughout here with the same style, the same color of buildings. I really do love that yellow and orange kind of style. It really does help it stand out a lot more against the crowd, and it really does come together so nicely in the end. This entire area, I really wasn't a fan of it at first, but it's slowly starting to become one of my favorite areas in the zoo it's one of the only areas in the zoo still but it really is super beautiful just to see these large expansive habitats it's really insane just that i'm finally able to actually build with uh, a lot of larger habitat sizes in mind and again i forgot to mention it i also went through with the shrubs after i did the grass because it helps build it up a lot more and that's very much in line with painting like the habitat i also put down a few more faux rocks again leaving everything on a line to surface keeping it in its own group and then selecting them all then lowering them down. It really does help to sell a habitat so much more. And I throw a few other things in here as well. I throw some dead branches, I throw some dead logs, and I help make some areas where it feels like, you know, stuff was kind of torn up. I also add these habitat gates right over there as well. Really awesome pieces over there. I kind of like used an air conditioning unit uh, as a way to kind of sell that kind of look over there. And I also go through and do some planting over here. I use a whole bunch of mulch and I actually do something kind of new. I actually use a faux rocks as a way to kind of sell this area a little bit more. So you can see I kind of color match those a little bit to help create these larger areas where like you have some like, you know, large collections of mulch. Maybe it was kind of torn up by the environment or like some local critters or something. We kind to make our way throughout there as well and I'm trying to figure out what else to do over there before I kind of settle on using some bamboo again nice cheap easy theming as well as some other smaller shrubs so I think I do settle on 
I actually forget what. Yeah, the nettle, and I mix those in with the ferns. Uh, a lot of the times I do like to mix my foliage a lot, especially in these, like, planted areas. Granted, I don't really have any plants in mind that I'm going for. I'm just going off of the looks, and I really do think it looks great in the end. It really is so beautiful and so lush, and I mix some of those Siberian shrubs back in there as well. And of course, we do kind of make our way throughout here with the final touches. And right before that, we do add some signage and stuff like that. Really nice, simple things. I use these. They're from my buddy Lion. He's an incredible creator for Planet Zoo. He's currently a very active member in ZSU, and I really do love to see that. He's actually staff. Look at him go. Uh, but that's about it for our habitat. I did a little bit of off-camera work, uh, but not really too much that you guys didn't see. I think I placed those rhino statues down, and that's about it. But I do want to thank you guys so much for watching it really is such a pleasure to you know make videos for all you guys see that you guys still enjoy them it really does warm my heart so i really do hope you guys enjoyed this video this was a super fun habitat to make that's one of my favorite views right through here as we like make our way through this habitat and you get to see like all the beautiful shrubbery and beautiful foliage it really did come out so well so i do want to thank you guys one last time you guys are actually literally the best fan base out there don't tell any other fan base i told you that but yeah you can start to see like our little monorail coming through there as well we got some nice shots of that but hey look at the little rhino thank you guys so much for watching can't wait to see you all in the next video take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days Bye bye now